In this video, I'm going to give you the specs on a GT4094R turbo. This is a turbo that Ian did a rebuild on. We had to replace the cage and the seals, but the compressor wheel was still good. We also had to replace the shaft. I will link to all the parts that we used in this build in case you're in need of those parts. The compressor wheel is 67.8 by 94 millimeter. The turbine wheel used in this build is the same as the GT4088. The measurements of that turbine is 68 millimeter by 77. This turbo is a little bit unique from other ball bearing turbos because it bolts, the bolts go through the center section to bolt directly to the exhaust housing. So the only way to rotate or clock the bearing housing on the turbine housing is to unbolt the center housing or the bearing housing from the turbine housing, rotate it, then rebolt it back down. The turbine housing has about 10 bolts drilled into the side of it that are threaded so that you can unbolt the bearing housing and clock the bearing housing and rebolt the bearing housing back into the position that you need. This GT4094R turbo has a 96AR turbine housing. The thing that sucks about these turbos is that there's not really a lot of great options for replacing the turbine housing to go with the larger or smaller turbine housing. The reason why that is is because of the different design that the bearing housing bolts to the turbine housing. This turbine housing is a divided T4 and this turbo is a ball bearing turbo. There you can see the restrictor pin that retains the cage. The other thing I don't like about this turbo is that it requires that you use a two bolt flange to bolt on your oil feed. I just don't like the idea of having a gasket there at the oil feed that could potentially leak and which if it's leaking then you could have the problem where the turbo is not getting enough oil to the bearing cage and if that happens then the whole turbo can get destroyed. Luckily in this case it just needed a cage and a shaft. If it ever needs a bearing housing, that may be a difficult part for us to get a hold of. One thing that I do like about this turbo is that the compressor housing, plate, and compressor wheel will all directly swap onto a 6.0 power stroke turbo. This turbo comes with a much larger ball bearing cage than the GT35R series. The thing I like about this is that the cage is much more durable. It's rated past what the GT35R cage is rated at. The GT35R cage usually comes apart around 40 pounds of boost. Usually people, or the most I've seen on the 35R cage is 900 horsepower, but that was really pushing it. I would not recommend running, trying to make over 850 horsepower on the GT35R cage. The difference in the GT4088 and the GT94 turbo is that the GT48 has a 63.5 by 88 millimeter compressor wheel. The GT4094 turbo has a 67.8 by 94 millimeter compressor wheel. The GT37R turbo is rated at 950 horsepower, so the GT40R series should be rated at between 850 to 1000 horsepower. The one thing that is kind of different is that for some reason the 4088R compressor wheel has a smaller inducer than the GT37R. The GT37R compressor wheel is 66.6 by 84 millimeter and the GT37R turbine is 64.5 by 74 millimeter. If you need a turbo build like this done, you can always contact us at turbolabamerica at gmail.com.